Hello everyone, welcome back. So since the advent of companies like Dua Fragrances who make very high quality, according to them, copies of well-known niche fragrances with high quality ingredients, some of the cheaper clone houses who copy well-known scents have been feeling a bit, a bit threatened and perhaps a little bit unhappy at the suggestion that their fragrances are recognizable as clones of this, that and the other, but you can tell a difference. And they've struck back by actually diversifying and they've gone into the world of uh, recreating famous paintings. So the the people who brought us the Aventus clone nightclub man in tents have recently released their own take on the famous painting the Mona Lisa. Similarly another Aventus clone house, uh, the, the people who brought us afternoon supreme silver have given us their rendition of the famous self-portrait by Van Gogh and the uh, well-known company Al Rehash have brought us uh, their own version of the famous painting by Picasso, The Three Musicians. Uh, so see if you can spot any differences. Uh, I think they're pretty good copies, recognizable, but with a few slight differences. Hello everyone, welcome back. So today we're going to be having a look at Royal Portugal from Dua Fragrances. This is their version of Creed's Bois de Portugal and we've got an interview with Masha Amraza, the head of Dua Fragrances. So I'm very excited about that coming up any moment now. Uh, before that, I'll just say that my little joke at the beginning there was actually just a joke because I do really like some of the inexpensive fragrances that clone niche stuff. Things like Club de Re Intense Man from the House of Armaf, good clone of Aventus, broadly very, very similar in the air. Many people won't tell much difference and the price is absolutely great. But with these, if you dig in, you can tell a difference. And if you've got the real fragrance, you can definitely tell they're not quite as good in the quality. With Dua Fragrances, the companies claim you're paying a bit more, but they are much, much closer to the actual real niche fragrance. Dua Fragrances just come in one sprayer size, that's 30 mils. And this one, Royal Portugal, is currently $50 on the company's website. I have to say the ones I've tried are very, very good. And in most cases, you really can't tell uh, an obvious difference in scent quality between the Dua fragrance and the original version. Uh, so let's see what Masham Raza had to say about this one. Before we do that, I'll just give a little bit of information about the notes of Guarda Portugal. Then we'll get into the interview and then I'll tell you what I think of the comparison between these two. So Creed's Bois de Portugal was released first in 1987. It features top notes of bergamot and lavender. In the heart we have cedarwood and the base notes are mysore sandalwood, vetiver and ambergris. That's according to Creed's own official website. It's recently been discontinued. It's one of my favourites. Let's find out what Masham Raza has to say about this one and his version, Royal Portugal. Okay, hello everyone. So today I'm really delighted to have Masha Amraza from Dua Fragrances here and he's visited London. How are you enjoying your trip so far? I love London. We've Beautiful. Been, we've been doing a little bit of shopping or we you did, have. We he's, did. He's been Fortnum like, and Mason. Yeah, we it had a great a... time in Fortnum and Mason's and you bought quite a few things, didn't I you? I did buy quite a few. All exclusives. Some very Nothing exclusive fragrances. you can get outside Fortnum and Mason. Right. It was all stuff that you couldn't get back home. So. Nope. Uh, yeah, he's, he, yeah, he was certainly having a good time oh, in yeah. Fortnum and Mason. So today we're going to talk very specifically about one Dua fragrance, and this is the incredible Royal Portugal, which is their take, of course, on Creed's Bois de Portugal. If you've watched my channel, you know it's one of my, my big favourite uh, Creed fragrances of all time, and maybe my favourite fragrance ever. So you and I, Sam, I think I can call you Sam, Just apparently, call me Sam. Uh, uh, we share a great affection for that absolutely, fragrance, absolutely. Creed, Creed's Bois de Portugal from 1987. What is it about that one that you really like? Um, I personally feel that Bois de Portugal is just one of those fragrances that grasp you as it opens up with the spicy lavender bergamot opening. Um, just beautifully done. I don't think any other fragrance at that time when it came out did what it did. And then 1987 also happens to be the year I was born in. Oh, I didn't yeah. know that. Okay. Um, so... For me, Creed Bois de Portugal is my signature scent. I think nothing that I've sniffed, and I've sniffed a lot, uh, comes close to dethorning Creed Bois de Portugal in my books. It's just one of those mesmerizing scents that I wish were still in production, but 
we have Royal Portugal. Sadly, just recently discontinued, yes. isn't it? Yes. yes. So, and that's where you come in because, uh, yeah, we've got Royal Portugal here, which I've had for a while and uh, I haven't got through a, a ton of it, but the time I've bought it three or four times. Really, really good clone, I must say. Of, you know, one that I really inspired love. Inspired expression. Oh, sorry, uh, pardon me. It's an inspired <laughs> expression, of course. Uh, so yes, uh, but it is remarkably similar Thank to Creed Wild de Portugal. So I, I really do think that this one has done a really good job of, of capturing the essence of the fragrance. Uh, I'll, I'll spray a little bit. I'll just spray. I, I love some too. Yeah, you want to go there? Yeah. Hey, cue gunshot sound. Here we go. Do two. So. How hard was it to capture the essence of that classic scent? Was it a hard one? It Easy? was semi-hard, but what was really hard was to make that opening tad bit spicier, tad bit fresher, and the opening to stick around longer than 10 minutes. That was the yeah. very tricky part. So for that, um, the, a few chemists I have on my payroll um, at a X factory, uh, we worked in collaboration with another factory and uh, we had a molecule developed only for this fragrance which uh, which is an enhancer of the spiciness of lavender right and that molecule also acts as an enhancer to spice up not the freshness but the bitterness of the bergamot peel right so blending that molecule it took us a while in order to get that molecule perfected mm -hmm. blending that molecule with the bergamot extract in there and the lavender in there and tweaking it at the perfect ratio really really took some time and took a lot of trial and error but okay. that actually helped right in getting this opening to last much longer than creeds while the portugal does and at the same time it takes the opening and it makes it a little bit more spicy a tad bit more greener and a tad bit more bitter which i think adds a little bit more character to creed bois de portugal and making it more reminiscent making it more reminiscent yes to the vintage batches of creed uh, bois de portugal and you've, you've tried some of those have you oh i have uh, the oldest batch i have is a 2010 it's uh, almost as dark as this okay, juice because right, you know right. the newer juice is like so it's, it's changed almost a little bit. colorless. Ah, uh, yeah. Uh, I've a got lot two of, batches. Yeah, so, okay. A lot of a lot of things have been changed and uh, a lot of things right. have been synthesized. But doing this little tweak that we yep. did, we were able to get get our get Royal Portugal close enough to the vintage uh -huh. batches. That's interesting. Yeah. So uh, as you've said there, I found that I, I felt yours just had a little bit more of the green opening, uh -huh. uh, ac accentuated more than my batches of Guarda Portugal. But really, an excellent copy. But it's yeah. interesting that you you do admit you have made a few tweaks. We so did. You haven't we did. simply completely tried no. to exactly no, copy. No. Because if we did that, we could have done that. Yeah. Then the result would have been a modern Guarda Portugal. And I was, mm -hmm. and when I actually did this, I didn't have a vintage batch. Uh -huh. The batch this was based off of was a 2014 batch. Okay. And again, it was already after the refund, so we actually had to get a little creative um, and try to do something that would be a little bit more vintage okay and then i recently acquired a 2010 batch and that's my oldest batch that i own and then i did a side by side comparison that one is actually the opening is closer to uh, okay, Royal portugal right. we had to kind of do a shot in the dark but we were able to pull it off so <laughs> The news is, folks, unfortunately, even with Boada Portugal, we have to worry about batch variations. It's not just Aventus. But, um, yeah, definitely, I'm really taken with this one. And, you know, we're saying there are some differences, but straight, just smelling it from the sprayer, it, it essentially captures yeah. the essence right. of, of one of my favourites, Boada Portugal. And uh, I've always found that's a good performing creed, but it's a very good maybe this creed. maybe could even be a little bit stronger. Um, it's, it is more concentrated okay. than what Boada Portugal is, so it will last a bit longer. Yeah, I, I um, found it broadly very similar in performance okay. which to me is more okay, than good enough because good enough, it's right. strong so right now creed by the portugal is not a beast mode but it's a very good performer and if we were yeah. able to match that in this case that's beautiful okay and of course uh very relevant and helpful now that we can get this one because it's discontinued it is so it is the case for your your brand there is strong because if you're going to struggle within a few years it's going to get really hard it's to get buy really and it's going to get very expensive the start creeping up and everything okay well brilliant thank you so much for copying one of my favorites i'm just going to pull out a couple of others that we're going to be hopefully featuring on the channel soon so we're looking forward to giving you some information about invasion invasion of the barbers based on invasion bar bar by mdci parfums uh, we've also got 
uh, Supernova, which is based on Elysium, which I smelled today, and I must say, yes. you didn't do bad. It's thank pretty you. good. Thank you. And thank there's you. one more, which is going to be and another I'll just, one. I'll just add, sorry yes, to cut please. you off that. Yeah. Supernova is a hybrid of the perfume cologne and the pure perfume. It's not based on one. That's right. It takes all the keynotes from the cologne and all the keynotes from the perfume and blends both of them together to give you the opening of the cologne the mid is nearly the same in the cologne and the perfume but then it dries down to the perfume instead right. of the drying down to the cologne so, so you, you, you should have the best of both worlds absolutely and i've yeah it's really brilliant fresh fragrance both the original versions by roger dove and i must say yours on first sniff very very similar Thank and you. we've got uh, soup sorry fortune which is your take on naxos by zerzhov another 10 out of 10 from me but let's see what i think of this one in an upcoming episode so thank you ever so much for it's my pleasure appearing on the channel it's it's, he's a real thank gentleman and a lovely thank man you. and thank you for thank I you for coming the kind word. thank you dan see you soon folks bye bye Okay, so thanks very much to Masham Raza. He was very candid there, wasn't he, in telling me how he went about creating the fragrance, and I'm very grateful for that. Didn't seem to have anything to hide. Of course, not everyone likes what they do. I can understand that, and I'm not really strongly coming out one way or the other. I do understand people really into their fragrances who don't approve of cloning, but it's uh, you know it's a fact of life, and uh, I'm just trying to give consumers a chance to decide if they might want to try some of these. So in the case of this one, Royal Portugal, and it's based on one of my real favourites. I've got a lot of uh, experience sniffing. I must say they did a great job. Basically, as we said in the interview there, the differences in the opening, which is a little bit greener and sharper and brighter in Royal Portugal than the real thing, Bois de Portugal. That may not be a bad thing. Most of us love the openings on fragrances, and this one hangs on to the opening a bit more, bit greener, bit fresher. As time goes on, they get closer and closer. Really, really hard to tell them apart, I have to say. They've done a brilliant job on this fragrance. Hard to distinguish it from the real thing. Certainly, people smelling it in the air, I think it's going to be as if you're wearing Bois de Portugal. Performance absolutely great in projection and longevity on both fragrances. Uh, this one's discontinued, going to get harder to find. So the case for this one existing, of course, is really strong because soon this is going to start going up in price. Hopefully this one won't. So Royal Portugal, well worth owning if you can't get hold of the real thing. So thanks very much for watching. Let me know what you think about Dua Fragrances or Bois de Portugal or this particular scent in the comments down below. Whatever you're doing in life, remember, let's project. See you in the next video. Bye-bye.